Our story. The Nile Mellon Township Trust was established in 2002 when Nile himself witnessed the inhumane living conditions in the townships of South Africa. Moved by the plight of the poorest of the poor, he set out to build low-costing but high-quality social housing, providing one of the most basic human rights, a house they can call a home. Our mission and target in South Africa was simple. We wanted to improve the quality of life of extremely disadvantaged people by helping them gain access to good quality housing. And with you, our volunteers, we've achieved it. To date, we've housed 125,000 people in 25,000 houses. We've worked hard, we've had laughter and tears and handed over the keys to their new homes to many happy families. Now we have embarked on a new target and we need you, our volunteers, to help us achieve it. Our mission is to provide 100,000 children in the disadvantaged communities throughout Africa with access to education. Education abolishes poverty, opens doors and provides brighter future for families and their communities. We believe that together we can make it happen. Mellon Educate. 2013 was a year of change. We focused our efforts on education and opened the doors of the first Mellon Educate school in Nairobi, Kenya. Over the past 24 months, Mellon Educate has completed six beautiful new schools, three early childhood development centers and one medical center. We're extremely proud of our achievements to date and none of this would have been possible without the continued support of our outstanding volunteers. We need you now more than ever to help us continue our mission. When we started in housing 13 years ago, everybody said to me that whatever we do would make no difference because millions of people were living in shacks. And now 13 years later, Thanks to the effort of many of these people here in front of me, 125,000 poor South Africans sleep tonight in beautiful homes because not just of their effort, but the friendship and partnership of our two nations. On the 7th of May of this year, we launched our charity in London. We were overwhelmed by the warmth of feeling towards our work and are really proud to have over 50 volunteers traveling with us from the UK this November. Mellon Educate Results Program. One day I want to be a doctor. I want to be a DJ. I want to become a lawyer. I want to be a drama star because I love acting. I want to study music. When I finish school, I want to study medicine. One day, I want to be a lawyer. The Mellon Educate Initiative aims to build better lives through educating 100,000 poor children throughout Africa. The first phase of this goal relies on the remarkable efforts of volunteers to improve and expand the infrastructure of the schools. Once the children have a warm and safe classroom to learn, the Mellon Educate team of specialist principals and teachers begin intensive mentoring and development of the management and teachers of the schools through the Mellon Educate Results Programme. I suppose what's different about our new education initiative is you're not just uh, building concrete foundations, but you're really laying a concrete foundation in the future lives for these children. We are not only building beautiful schools, we are also going on a journey with these schools for at least two years until we see a pass rate of 75%. We 
will bring in specialised principals and teachers who work as a team with the school in order to turn these schools around. That is why we brought in Mr Derek Peterson, who has a proven track record in turning around schools. We, we strive for excellence and uh, this programme entitles us to do the right thing, to intervene, to, to, to help learners with mathematics and languages and if they master that, we can uh, actually uh, uh, improve uh, in many areas in the other subjects. Mellon Educate is about putting in place the tools that gives the, give these schools a long-term sustainable future. We are equipping these schools with the knowledge and skill set to achieve a pass rate that they never dreamed was possible even 12 months ago. Most of these schools have a fail rate as high as 90%. We're committing in every school that we start in to achieving a pass rate of 75%. Building Blair 2015, 250 volunteers, one week, one primary school, 1,650 children, and 12 new classrooms. We are so excited to welcome 80 brand new volunteers this November. We can't wait to meet you and share the Building Blitz experience with you. Thank you for taking your first step with Mellon Educate. Never forgetting our veteran volunteers, here are some staggering achievements for our new volunteers to aim for. We have 18 travelling with us for a second time, 17 for a third time, 16 for a fourth time, 15 for a fifth time, 18 for a sixth time, 24 for a seventh time, 31 for an eighth time, 14 for a ninth time, 6 for a tenth time, 5 for an eleventh, 12th time, 1 for a thirteenth time. On-site information. Bus to site will depart at 6.45 a.m. sharp. It will not wait around. A hard hat and steel boots must be worn. Your name badge must be visible. You must wear your kit t-shirt on site every day. Red card if you break these rules more than once means a flight home. All volunteers on site are broken into groups. These groups are made up of a mixture of trade and non-trade volunteers. There are four key roles to remember. Foreman. The foreman is the manager of the group. They wear a yellow hard hat. They coordinate all of your work. When you arrive on the first day, they will hold a meeting and assign your duties for the week. Team leader. The team leader will help with the smooth running of your group deliver daily updates and communications. They will help with any problems you may encounter interacting with fellow volunteers. Health and Safety Officer. This year we have two health and safety officers whose role it is to work side by side with the foreman and ensure that we have a safe and healthy working environment for all. They wear a red hard hat. Medical Team. The medical team is based on the site compound throughout the working day and in the hotel in the mornings and evenings. Foreman health and safety officers, team leaders and medics are all volunteers just like you. Health and safety. Our policy is the provision of a safe and healthy working environment for all volunteers during the course of the building blitz. Look after yourself and others. You must wear minimum personal protective equipment. Hard hat, safety boots or steel toe boots, gloves and shirts. All cuts and bruises must be covered. Wraparound glasses are a necessity. Long trousers are strongly recommended. Always remember, a tidy site is a safe site. Read your health and safety book before departure. Security. Security of the volunteers is at the top of our agenda. We take it very seriously and have a professional security team working with us throughout the week. Here are a few very important guidelines how to keep safe during the week of the building blitz. The building site. Do not take chances whether it's your first time or fifth time on the Blitz. Do not cross site boundaries. Do not take valuable personal belongings with you on site, such as jewellery, money, phones, expensive cameras or your passport. Never walk alone in Masipumalela. Never walk alone at night time. Always ask the hotel to call you a taxi. Only use ATMs accompanied by a group. Always exercise caution because your health and safety is our priority. Educational program. 
Our educational program is a very important part of the Building Blitz. Whether you are a first-time volunteer or a long-standing veteran, please make time to attend community and school visits we have arranged this year. It will help you to see and better understand what local families and communities are enduring. It will allow you to talk to people you are helping. It will inspire you to work even harder to help those who are in need. We kindly ask you to always remember these are real lives and real people. Respect the local customs and culture and always ask for permission to take photographs. Please check the visit schedule with your team leaders. Donations. The local communities really appreciate the donations our volunteers bring to them. But we ask you, do not donate directly on site or during the educational visits. This causes huge security issues for the recipients and compromises the family. Each year, as always, we will work with the local community leaders and social workers to ensure that everything is distributed fairly. Donations to the local community and especially the children are a huge part of our building blitz. We know that many of you have spent months collecting toys and clothing, etc. to bring with you in November. We have a variety of flights reserved this year. Please contact the office in relation to your individual luggage allowance to enable you to bring as much as possible with you. Blitz Logistics and Practicalities your flight tickets will be sent to you 14 days before departure. You must have a valid passport and it must be in date six months after your visit is completed. This year, most of you will have three flights to take you to Cape Town. Be connecting via London, Abu Dhabi, Dubai and Istanbul. Total travel time will be about 17 hours. The majority of you will connect to Cape Town via a scheduled internal flight. We will be staying in one hotel, the Cape Sun, Strand Street, Cape Town. For any queries or issues, a help desk at the hotel is manned by charity staff between 6pm and 8pm every evening. A medic will be on call from 6pm to 7pm every evening. Our insurance requires that all the volunteers must have their fitness to travel signed off with their GPs before travelling. Please check with your doctor regarding vaccinations and boosters you may require for Cape Town. When working on site, be realistic with your fitness. Take regular breaks, drink at least eight bottles of water per day. Lunch on site will be provided. Never accept food from locals. It is the policy of the charity to police vet all our volunteers. If you have not yet returned your police clearance form, please contact the charity office immediately. Read up about your destination before you travel. Be knowledgeable and respect local culture and customs. Always ask permission when taking photographs. Never presume. We recommend you to bring the following items on the building blitz. Steel toe boots, light rain jacket, fleece jacket and some warm clothes. Light loose clothing, small medical kit, prescription medication, lots of sun cream, after sun, insect repellent and wrap around sunglasses. Mellon Educate believes that every child deserves a good education and with your support we can make this a reality for thousands of impoverished children in Africa. Precious Fani, who lives in a township called Maspumalele, also has hopes and dreams for a better future. Like most others in the township, she lived in appalling conditions in a shack. With high unemployment and drug abuse a huge problem in the community, the future is not always so bright. Precious was finishing high school when she received a new home through the Nile Mellon Township Trust's investment in Maspumalele in 2012. This year, she is proud to hear that Mellon Educate will be investing in the only primary school in Maspumalele, Ukanyo Primary School. I, I would say I'm, I'm very proud of what you are doing because I also went to Ukanyo Primary School. I would say I am the product of, primary, of Ukanyo Primary School. So whatever you are doing, they say great order because most of, most of our children in our community they go to Ukanyo Primary School because some of our parents don't have money to take our children to fancy schools. So I'm very proud of what you are doing and I'm, also, I'm honored because I'm also a product of Ukanyo Primary School. I come from there until where I am. Ukanyo Primary School educates 1,648 learners with only 43 teachers. 
the school was originally built to educate only 600 learners. Overcrowding in the classroom is a major problem and many of the classrooms are prefabricated temporary structures. The, 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 the majority of our learners are coming from this community, Maspumelele, where they, the, the, their parents or their families do live below poverty line. They are not employed at all, they struggle to put food on the table. The school is supporting their children in terms of providing them with uh, peninsula school feeding because we do cook for them now that they come to school without a slice of bread since they are living below poverty line. Some of them, they can't even wear the prescribed school uniform. The school needs to sort of look around and get people who can donate school uniform to them. And, um, the fact that uh, our school doesn't have um, facilities such as taps that are enough for the children. So now if, I ask, if a child asks to go to find water, he has to go down far from the class to get water because you don't have taps around and you don't have uh, classes, I mean, that are built. It's only these um, containers that are not conducive to teaching because when it's hot, it is very hot. When it's cold, it is very cold. So it's not really conducive to e teaching and it makes teaching and learning very difficult. Despite all these challenges, the heart of the school, its teachers, remain positive and committed to their calling. Uh, I love being a teacher because it is my passion to, 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 to plow back, especially in my community. I'm here to change lives, I'm here to develop children, I'm here to make a difference in the community because by developing these children, we are developing the community that we're coming from. And um, we are unleashing potentials that children don't even know that they have. So we're here to do that. I love being a teacher because at the end of the day, you see the results by seeing children becoming what they want to be. And also I want to change the community. I want to work for the community to give them the better future. That's why I'm a teacher. The collective effort of Melon Educate and its volunteers aims to not only refurbish Unkanyo Primary School, but also invest in its passionate teachers through the Melon Educate Results Program. You are changing a community. You are making a difference. This is Niall Mellon here. Um, I want to extend the warmest welcome and deepest thanks to all of our volunteers who've worked so hard all year to raise the money to come out on our 2015 November Blitz here in Cape Town. This is one week of your life, but it's a lifetime to the children that you're coming to help here. This school at Okanyu and in Masipumalele at Ocean View in Cape Town has 1,650 pupils. Don't think for one second when you look at their, their pretty faces and happy smiles, and indeed even in many cases their clean t-shirt, that these children have it easy. Many of you will be deeply shocked to realize that of the 1,650 pupils here, almost 30%, we've been told, are orphans. And without your help, their future, in many cases, is already predetermined. Over 60% of these children live in shacks. And I know that many of the volunteers who are coming out on this trip, who worked so hard to help us build our houses over the years, know the difference that a house makes to these children. But most of these children have not benefited from our program and they still live in appalling conditions in shacks. So some of them are orphans and they live in shacks. For them to see you guys and girls come from the other side of the world and to show them some love and to care for them is enormously important in their view of the outside world of their community. Many of their classrooms here are substandard. When it rains, the water comes through and when it's hot, the temperatures are stifling inside the rooms. The week that you spend here is going to result in 12 brand new classrooms in this one school alone. That's approximately 400 children who will have beautiful classrooms at the end of that week who had nothing at the start of it. Their time in this school will be five or six years 
And after they've left, another batch of children are going to benefit from these classrooms that you're going to build this week. Nelson Mandela was a huge supporter of mine and a huge supporter of all of you volunteers who came out and helped to build houses in his country. He told me he couldn't find words to express what it meant to him to see so many people coming from the other side of the world and helping to rebuild a great South Africa. So our Blitz this year is a particularly special one. It's back in Cape Town where our housing project commenced. It is six or seven days, but as I said, it's a lifetime to the people that you're helping. Before we wrap up this video, I want to just say one thing to you, that the only reason our charity has succeeded for so many years is because each person who volunteered has made an enormous difference. And whether it's you coming on this trip and going back as an advocate and spreading the word, you're helping in ways you can't even begin to imagine how important you are to us. We're setting another big target for 2016 and, and in 2017, we want to bring over 2,000 volunteers once again here to South Africa. So I hope you'll have a great week. Most importantly, you'll take good care not to injure yourself. And most importantly, you'll go back, I hope, convinced that every single person in our world back in the UK and Ireland and indeed America and Canada and the other countries who are helping us, that every person should make it a life mission to come out on one of these trips for one week. So that's the end of it for me. Look forward to seeing you in November and thank you once again from the bottom of my heart for your generosity and kindness in playing such a vital role in helping us to change the lives of these children. Thank you. We would like to say an enormous thank you to all of our new and veteran volunteers travelling with us on this very special Cape Town Building Blitz. Thank you for all of your fundraising efforts throughout the year. We know that all of your hard work will be worth it when at the end of the week you hand over 12 beautiful new classrooms to the children of Ukanya Primary School. We very much look forward to seeing you in November. Look, thanks again everybody. I know you've watched our debriefing video now and just before you leave, I think it would be remiss of me if I didn't point out that whichever country excluding Ireland that wins the Rugby World Cup, um, we're going to pay our respects to that by giving the most difficult jobs out here to people from that country um, during the entire week of the Blitz. So England, Scotland or Wales, toilet cleaning, toilet cleaning duties await the volunteers in those countries if you guys beat Ireland in the World Cup. Good luck. Bye bye.